What is good, everybody? Today we're back with a brand new WWE Ultimate Edition 2-pack, and it is on the ringside exclusive WWE Ultimate Edition 2-pack of The Outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Now, these are ringside exclusives, so if you want to grab these, you can do so. Over ringside collectibles, man, use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but we have been waiting on this pack for what seems like absolutely forever. It definitely seems like we've been waiting on these guys forever, but they're finally here among us. The last 2-pack we got like this was the Usos, and we do have the Steiners coming later on, either this year or next year. I don't know. The Steiners, they were completed, and the boxes are all very similar with the half bases of each character, but I did enjoy that Usos pack, and now I'm excited to dive into this pack that we have here today. And I think it looks pretty damn good, man. I'm excited for it. It should be a good one. I can't wait to unbox this with you. But we do have the shipping container here. Now, it does come in its own separate box. But here is kind of the shipper that it comes in, quote unquote. And you do have the outsiders down the front. You have the black and white NWO look of Scott Hall, Kevin Nash. Ringside exclusive down here. Mattel logo there. We spin it to the side. We do have the outsiders on the side. You can see there, right there. I'm kind of tripping out by the font. I don't know why the font. I guess it's because it's so big. It kind of throws me off. But you rotate it around. You have the NWO logo spray painted there. And you have the W. WWE logo. And then on the other side, you do have the WWE Ultimate Edition logo, but it does have the NWO spray painted over the top. And then on the top of the packaging, it does have the Ultimate Edition logo right there. And that is pretty much our little shipper there. But uh, anyway, I want to crack them out of this shipper container and then show you the actual packaging where you can see through the front viewing window and see what these figures actually look like before we unbox them and review them here today. So let's go ahead and do so. And here we have the Scott Hall and Kevin Nash out of the packaging. Now, one thing that kind of trips me out is that they have the regular white box with the red accents when usually for exclusives, it's the opposite, I'm pretty sure. So that kind of trips me out a little bit. Maybe the, actually, I think the Usos were the same way, the white with the red. And it kind of fits because Ringside Collectibles color scheme is essentially this. It's the red and white. So I don't know, that kind of all ties in together. Mattel, Ringside, all of their logos are red and white and black. So I guess that kind of, I, I think that's just a coincidence. But nonetheless, it does look good. We do have Scott Hall here, fifth Kevin Nash. One thing that I'm bummed out about is I could find my Legend Scott Hall that's very similar to this. It's, it's somewhat, I mean, the elite equivalent of what we have here for this Ultimate Edition. However, I could not find my Kevin Nash equivalent with the Outsider shirt and everything, but it does look good. You have the WCW logo here. You have Scott Hall there. Rest in peace to the Legend. Looks good on the back there. Like how he's doing the kind of spooky fingers. And you do have a shot of Scott Hall there. If you want to read it, you can pause it now. 6-7 Miami. Absolute boss. And then we do have Kevin Nash here, which I don't know who I'm excited for most. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to unbox him, but Kevin Nash has had a pretty good history of figures, I'd say, and I think he's kind of underrated in, in the Mattel line. I feel like he has such a, I don't know, there's something about his figures that are very quality. There's something about the posability and the way they feel in hand and stuff, but we have some newness going on right here that I'm excited to get into with you, but you have a shot of Kevin Nash there. Handsome fella. WCW logo. Nice shot of Kevin Nash on the back. Always a prototype featured on the packaging. Then we do have Kevin Nash here. 6'10". I feel like he may be a little bit bigger, but that is the little bio read there. But nonetheless, man, we're going to crack these out of the packaging, find out what Kevin Nash and Scott Hall are all about, see if they're worth a damn, see how they compare to our elite figures, man. But with that being said, let's go ahead, crack these Ultimate Editions out and find out how Scott Hall and Kevin Nash fit into our Ultimate Edition collections. So here are the Outsiders Ultimate Editions out of the packaging. Of course, we already have an Ultimate Edition of Kevin Nash in a diesel form. We already have Scott Hall in a Razor Ramon form. Actually, you have, the, you know, you have the Razor Ramon and the Chase figure, but never found that damn Chase, by the way. Hate to see it. I guess that's why they call it a Chase, because I'd be chasing. I can't find Shish, man, so that's just how it'd be. But nonetheless, man, I'm excited for this pack. I think it's a pretty unique set, and I think Ringside Collectibles did not get out of the park with their selection for this. I think people are going to be over the moon for this and wanting this in their collection, so we are going to, of course, dive into it, get into it. But with that being said, man, we're going to dive into Scott Hall's accessories in the Scott Hall, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at the Kevin Nash accessories and the Kevin Nash. So for Scott Hall's accessories, he does check the benchmarker. He meets the level of an Ultimate Edition with the accessories that they pack him with. Now we have seen these head sculpts before. This is the same Ultimate Edition head sculpt we got on his other two. It's a good likeness. I feel like there's something off about it though. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it looks just like him for the most part. I just wish it, I don't know, it just has kind of a cartoony look to me a little bit, but I'd still like it. It's a good head sculpt. I like the beard and everything. I think it's a good aesthetic of the figure. And then we have the spooked out head sculpt to the spooky face. Now I feel like my eye may be a little misprinted on this right eye, but for the most part, I do like this head sculpt. I think that there is something off about it, but I can't really say. But I still, yeah, it's something to do with the eye or maybe the lips or something like that is off, but I still like the expression. I like that they included this. I like the, you know, the spooky fingers face sculpt is pretty good. I like that they included this. I like those kind of weird obtuse head sculpts where they're kind of making a different face. And you know, Mattel's kind of been in that era lately, the last few years of doing something like this, so that's kind of what I get out of it. And last but not least, we have this head sculpt where he kind of just looks appalled 
and it kind of reminds me of somebody, and I don't really even want to point that out, but it's somebody I didn't like, all right? It's somebody I didn't really care for, and I don't like this expression. It just looks weird. I don't really care for it all that much. It just looks a bit odd. I wish he was just pissed off or stern. I don't even know. He kind of looks like he just he was told to shut the hell up or something, and he's like, oh, because that's kind of what it looks like. I don't know. I don't really care for the head sculpt all that much. Now, outside of that, we do get a WCW World Tag title, and I do like this championship. We have seen it before, though. On the Superstars line and things like this, we have seen these tag titles before, but they do look nice, and they painted on the belt clip, and Mattel does a pretty good job on their belts. They're not perfect by any stretch, but for the most part, since they are mass-produced, I think they do a pretty solid job. And then what would Razor Ramon or Scott Hall be without his entrance vest? So you do get the bloody drips right here, and on the back it does say Outsiders, and I always loved how it kind of ran, kind of like blood a little bit. You know, it kind of looks like it's dropping a little bit, and then you have the blood drop for the eye right there, which I like. I don't know. There's something about this vest that is just iconic, and it is the iconic Razor Ramon vest, so I think they did a good job here. Same sculpt we've seen a hundred times, but it does have the blood, you know, the blood or the red going over the top of the drips, and it's iconic for that reason, man. I mean, what do you, what else could you ask for on the Outsiders vest? And then for two different Cloth Goods t-shirts that do have Velcro, they are Velcro on the back, so if you guys are wondering if it's Velcro, it is Velcro on the back. We do have this NWO shirt probably, if not the top one, it's definitely a top three most iconic wrestling t-shirt of all time, if not number one. You can have that debate. I think there's two or three shirts that would probably be up there as the most iconic shirts of all time. This is probably at the top there, so we do have the NWO shirt. And then you have this Outsider shirt, which we did see on his last Legends figure, but I could not find, I did find the Scott Hall. I have that one for comparison. I do not have the Kevin Nash, unfortunately, so, but they did both, both the Kevin Nash and the Scott Hall that came in those waves did have this same Outsider shirt that has the NWO logo down there, and you have the portrait there. And then this is also Velcro. So it's pretty much the exact same shirt. It looks a bit big, though. I don't know, but I am glad that it came with this shirt. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get mic holding or weapon wielding style hands for Scott Hall. You do get the spooky fingers, which I low-key wish they would have changed because it just looks like he's holding something. You know, this is supposed to be the Million Dollar Man or the Cameron Grimes holding money hand sculpt. And it kind of looks like he's doing the spooky fingers a little bit. You know, if you do this right here, it kind of looks like he's about to start doing it. But I think, they, I don't know, it's not bad. It's just, it's a unique way. It's a creative way to try to use it, but it is kind of the money holding hand sculpts. And what's wild is the last hands he has are the two sweet hands. So you get the two sweet hands and no fists. He can't beat the hell out of anybody, which is crazy, but you can too sweet him. All right, man, getting into Scott Hall, starting off the head sculpt. I like this head sculpt. We have seen it on the Ultimate Edition beforehand. And one thing about it is this figure doesn't come with the stank face, man. Why doesn't this figure come with the stank face? I would have preferred having the stank face, I think, rather than what we got here with this figure. But I don't hate it. You know, you do get the stank face on the other. And if you guys don't know, this is the stank face. So this is what I'm talking about. This head sculpt's a lot better, man. Definitely going to be doing some photography with this at the end. I, I just like that head sculpt. That stank face, man. I think I've said stank face enough, all right? But going down, I do love that they included all the chest and stomach hair. I do like the torso choice here. I don't hate it for Scott Hall. I know a lot of people say it's too small. I don't mind it. I think it's the AJ Styles torso, if I'm not mistaken. And I do like that they continue the chest hair onto the butterfly joints. That's a nice detail. I do think that they make the shoulders and arms too small. I think these are too skinny for Scott Hall. I think that, you know, you could benefit from an upgrade here. Maybe not too damn big, but I think maybe, uh, I don't know, I like the striated shoulders on a lot of guys, and I think that would really do wonders for this figure, especially in other ways, but I, I don't know. It's something about that I just don't like, that they just went with the skinny arms. But going down on the tights, you do get the bloody drips there with the outsiders on it, which looks really good. I love this gear. You also have it on the elbow pad over there. It's a really nice looking gear. I like this gear a lot. I don't think we've seen this gear before, if I'm not mistaken. The Elite 51 was similar, but I don't think it was quite this gear. I could be wrong. And I'm actually missing that Elite 51. I saw that Elite 51 so far ago, and then the original ringside exclusive. Never got that one either, so I am kind of behind on Scott Hall figures, honestly. But going down, you even have the iconic knee pads. They are the large version, so you, unfortunately, they are going to hinder articulation, but it's still a good looking knee pads, you know? And then he does have the tall red boots with the black laces, which is a clean look, and he does have the white outsoles, which are nice. In terms of articulation, it is kind of your classic Mattel articulation. You're not get, dealing with any stiffness. These guys don't have pinless joints or anything, so he's going to be butterly smooth, you know? Good waist and all that. Good butterfly joint up here and his arms are pinless but these you know we don't have really a problem with pinless arms it's more about the pinless legs but he does have the drop down hips which allow for a decent kick forward right there I think you know 90 is about what you get there you do want to be careful putting that back in place though you do get the upper thigh cut you get the double jointed knee boot rotation old ankle rocker which isn't great for these tall boots but you do get the toe pivot there and the foot goes down and up you do get decent articulation here I will say that his legs feel a little finicky not the greatest but I don't have have like a ton of issues posing this guy around. I've had pretty good amounts of fun posing this guy around. I think you guys will too. But then for your Ultimate Edition figure comparison, we do have the Razor Ramon Ultimate Edition on the left, and it looks like th 
this one's slightly taller, but I think it's because I didn't push this head sculpt all the way down because if you push this head sculpt all the way down, it makes him have no neck. Am I tripping? I swear. Like, look at him now. He kind of looks like he has no neck. Am I tripping? Yeah, so that's why I had this one sitting a little bit high. That way, you know, it, it does add a little height to the figure, which actually may be better because I feel like they make Scott Hall too small sometimes, but it makes it taller than this, but this looks a lot more proportionate than it did when you push it all the way down, but this is our comparison here, and I definitely like the Scott Hall over the Razor, even if this Razor gear is pretty cool, and we do have some cool Razors in our collections, but as far as other comparisons, we do have a few Elites here. You have the Legends Target Exclusive Scott Hall over here. You have the WrestleMania 35 Elite Scott Hall, and then we do have the Monday Night War Series 1 Scott Hall, and all of these vary in their own different ways, but this Ultimate Edition is definitely better than all of these, especially this one right here. I can't stand that figure. That figure was abysmal. I like this head sculpt, and I do like this figure. Hated that matchup, though, and that Mania moment. Just, uh, besides the stunner, the stunner kind of sold the entire thing, honestly. It's the only reason, really, why it was memorable, but God, I remember watching that Mania as a kid. I think it was six years old, maybe seven. Oh, that's just tragic. When we get into Kevin Nash, I'll showcase some other NWO comparisons and stuff like that. And then we have Kevin Nash's accessories, and pretty much, he comes with exactly what you get out of the Scott Hall, minus a pair of interchangeable hands. Now, first up, we do have this Kevin Nash head sculpt that's smiling, and I do believe this is a brand new head sculpt. I don't think we've seen this head sculpt before, but I do like it. He's looking slightly to the left, but the smile is nice, and I think the likeness is there, all those things considered, and the hair looks good, the brown color. I feel like it was more of a dirty blonde or more of a blondish light brown, but it is super dark brown, which isn't the biggest deal ever. You could potentially head swap it with a different Kevin Nash if you want to, but I do like the likeness on this head sculpt. And then we have the sort of pissed off, straight face, like you just effed up kind of head sculpt from Kevin Nash here, and it reminds me a lot of the Russian from the 2004 Punisher movie, which is one of my favorite films of of all time. Say what you want about it, man. I love that movie. I love Thomas Jane. I love that entire thing. It's just a fantastic film. I, I, I watch it like three times a year. I love that movie. But we do have Kevin Nash here, and this is exactly the expression he makes as the Russian when he breaks into the Punisher's apartment. That is exactly what he makes, and I think they did a good job capturing that. And then last but not least, we do have pretty much the Diesel head sculpt with a different hair sculpt. I mean, this looks identical to the Diesel screaming expression, except it does have a different hair sculpt. And to prove this point, I'll bring them up next to each other. You're going to tell me that's not the exact same expression, man. That looks to be the exact same. I'm pretty sure that's the exact same. I guess I could be wrong. Maybe it is slightly different, but man, they look pretty damn identical. It's probably because it's the same guy. I saw that we do have a World Tag Team Championship just like Scott Hall. It's the exact same. No differences whatsoever. Still has the belt clip and all that jazz. And what's wild is his entrance vest is pretty much the exact same as his diesel one. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same sculpt. Actually, no, it's not. It's not the exact same sculpt. I take that back. I don't know if we've seen this sculpt before on this vest, but my money would bet that we have. I bet we have have it, but you do have the streamers of these sort of tassels coming down in the black and red, and then on the back you do have this classic NWO logo, which looks so damn good. What a great logo. Underrated. Mine's a bit sticky for some reason. I don't know what's going on there, but I do like the colors here. It looks really good, and I think they did a good job here on the vest. And then just like Scott Hall, you do get an Outsiders t-shirt that's cloth goods and Velcro, and then you do get another NWO t-shirt, which is another just vintage, iconic Velcro t-shirt for your action figures. And then for his interchangeable hands, all you get is a pair of mic holding slash weapon wielding hands. No fists, no nothing, no spooky dookie hands, no pointer fingers, just the two sweet. So for the Kevin Nash at the top of the head sculpt, we already discussed. It looks pretty good, man, I think, for the most part. You know, he's another guy that I kind of lack in my collection. It's probably why I like this two-pack so much, is because I lack in Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, and Kevin Nash action figures. There are a lot that I'm lacking on in that area. But this head sculpt does look good, and you go down to the torso. I do like this torso. I do believe it's the exact same torso we saw on his Diesel Ultimate that came with the new Gen Arena crowdfunder, which God in heaven, man, I can't wait for the next crowdfunder. If it sucks, I'm gonna have to just break my own foot off in my own A. Oh God, please don't suck. But then we do have the Outsiders on the gear, which I like a lot. And it's kind of trippy because I remember just wanting that Elite 16 Nash so much and I never got my hands on it. Now it feels like I'm holding the better version of that, which is great. But he does have the nice arms in there. I think that these shoulders look better on Kevin Nash. They're kind of the striated ones, not completely striated like a Bobby Lashley, I don't think, but, or maybe they are the Bobby Lashley style mold but they look really good here. I think they did a great job there. You got the Outsiders on there. He does have his big elbow pad that's kind of an off-white and then you do have the white wrist tape in there and then spinning it to the back. You do have the butterfly joints, the back of the red singlet. Kind of just plain Jane but you do have that belt sculpted onto the singlet pants which is nice and then he does have his tassels going down the side. It does say Outsiders right there when you line it up and he does have the pin joints. You know the Ultimate Edition diesel moves around quite well and this one feels kind of the same in hand but he does have the Ultimate Edition boots at the bottom and he just has that full red singlet there. But as far as articulation is concerned, he posed around pretty damn well. For an Ultimate Edition torso, you get a lot of crunk right there. You get 
a nice bit of torque right there and you get the full diaphragm movement. Butterfly joint is also pretty damn smooth. Double jointed arms, which are great. You know, you can pop the shoulders in and out because it is an ultimate edition. You guys know how they roll. But uh, I feel like a lot of people come here for the legs and he does have the drop down legs there. And you know, you want to know about your big boot. It feels a bit wonky, not going to lie. And I can't really get it super high unless I'm just, I don't know. You have to kind of torque it to the outside and the, the, the drop down hip is there. But then when I go to kind of bend it up, I'm not being able to achieve that big boot right there, which is pretty upsetting. But you do get the upper thigh cut. His knee joints are great because they are pinless. So they aren't pinless. So you get a really good double jointed knee. And I love the way they hide those pins on these tassels because you can't really see them that well. So they did a good job there. And then he can do the splits and all that. But, uh, you know, it's, it, I don't know. I don't like that you can't really get this leg up that much. As far as this leg is concerned, yeah, see, you're still not even getting it on this side, man. So you just want to be careful there, man, playing with fire, as they say. But you do get the toe articulation. Not a real ankle rocker, maybe just a little. But no shin cut on there, even though it would be nice to have a shin cut. It's not the biggest deal that he doesn't have it. I'm kind of used to it now. Any guys with long pants from Mattel, we don't really get shin cut. So maybe that'll be something that could be implemented down the line. But this Kevin Nash figure is quite good. But, you know, comparing it to the others, we have him here up next to the Ultimate Edition New Gen Arena Diesel Ultimate, which was a great figure as well. And look at the shoulders, man. These shoulders look more striated than those, but it could be a different lesson there. But a lot of these guys or these figures use a lot of the same parts. They're just kind of repaints at this juncture with a different head sculpt or sculpted hair. And the vest is slightly different. You know, they do differ there, but at the end of the day, they're, I mean, they're pretty much the same, more or less. But I do like the both, both these figures a lot. I remember that Diesel Ultimate kind of shocking me and the way that it was. I really liked it when it came out. Or maybe it's grown on me over time. I'm not entirely sure, but another Kevin Nash comparison. We do have the Ruthless Aggression Elite here, and this is, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of the only Kevin Nash Elite, like Kevin Nash Elite. I do have some diesels and stuff, but I cannot find my Outsiders one, my Legends one. I can't remember if I sold it or what happened there, but again, man, I'm missing a lot of holes. I don't have the Elite 16. I don't have the Ringside Exclusive from back in the day. I don't have the other Elite 16 diesel, so I don't know, man. I'm missing quite a bit of Nash figures in the collection, but one more comparison is I did want to put these guys up next to each other so you could see a size comparison, so you do have your Scott Hall and Kevin Nash comparison right here, and then I did want to pull the NWO Hulk Hogan or Hollywood Hulk Hogan right here so you could kind of see all three of these up next to each other. If you guys wanted to see that, you could put these guys together, see how all three ultimates kind of scale together. And I think these look pretty good up next to each other for the most part, but I'm not some connoisseur loving, you know, just ultimate NWO lover. I did like him as a kid, you know, in different moments of it, but I don't know. I was never the biggest Hogan, Scott Hall, or Kevin Nash fan, even though I am fans of the three in their own ways and they're nostalgic in different ways. I still was never, you know, just some massive supporter of the guys. But uh, for one more comparison I want to do is I do want to bring in the NWO Wolfpack Sting just to kind of look at it, you know. So I do have the ringside exclusive NWO Wolfpack Sting just to kind of get that in there. And again, I don't know. I think it scales kind of well. He may be a little bit too short there, but I know a lot of people always complain that these three are way too short when they make their figures. So maybe this will suffice or make you feel better about that. But, but at the end of the day, I'm glad to have these figures in the collection. But at the end of the day, man, that pretty much wraps up the Ringside Collectibles exclusive WWE Ultimate Edition 2-pack of the Outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, man. I really like these figures overall. Do I think they're absolutely needed? I think if you're an Ultimate Edition collector, hell yeah, they're needed. Because I think that these are the definitive versions of these guys that you would want to see. I like all the accessories. I like the head sculpts. Not all of them are perfect, but I still think that these are great. And this is a great replacement for your Kevin Nash Elite 16. That figure is super outdated. I don't even own it anymore. I don't think I ever have owned it, actually. So that kind of tells you. That head sculpt was really outdated. Reminded me of a damn Toy Biz figure or something. I just, I think these are the definitive outsiders. This is a pack that you will enjoy. If you're a throwback flashback collector, as my damn lamp tries to crash in on the action, it's not about you, damn it. But I think overall, this set is really fun. It's, you know, it's an Ultimate Edition pack, man. I mean, what do you want to say? I think it's a really great one. All things considered, anything I don't like about the pack, I don't really care for the Scott Hall head sculpt where he's kind of serious. I don't think it looks that good. I do kind of like the spooky head sculpt, I think. I wish the lips were a little bit more puckered or something like that. And maybe, you know, a toothpick head sculpt or something like that would be cool. But I like, that's really all. All I can say about the pack overall, I think the Kevin Nash head sculpts are really strong, all things considered. I like the yelling head sculpt. I like the, I call it the Russian head sculpt because that's what it reminds me of from the Punisher 2004 movie. I just think this set will fit right in and I think that, you know, it's been a long time since we've really seen Scott Hall in this style of tire and it low-key is the best gear we've seen with that Outsiders written on it like that. So, I don't know, man. Your choice, you make the decision, but I think these are grabbable and you should grab them. So, if you want to, go over there, use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but I'm getting 
getting the hell out, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate you, fellas. Thank you guys so very much again for all of your support. You guys are absolutely goaded, and I appreciate all of you every single day. But I'm rolling the hell out, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later. <laughs>